What's up? Welcome back to Lowfoot TV. So we're doing a little bit of work on Subaru. Basically, we've discovered a few problems. Yeah. <laughs> what well, one that it doesn't stop, and the other one that it's got a bit of a knock. Yeah. <laughs> Considering the price you paid for the car, I think this is all right. Yeah. Basically, we got a knock on the back. The guy said he put an uprated anti-roll bar on the back, and he says that basically the knock started after he'd done that. So we don't know whether the extra strain from the anti-roll bar has like worn out the drop links or yeah. something like that. And then the brakes just do not work at all. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of go with the car, but not a lot of stop right now. Definitely need to investigate what that is. The first time I tr I went for it in it, and um, I went I went down Life Valley Road, and I yeah. got to the first corner, I was like, I am going to die. <laughs> it's, it's a good job there's a lot of on there, but at the same time, it's like a, a seven-foot drop on yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. As I promised last video, I would do some research on the car, and we found I found this while I was going through all the paperwork, which is pretty cool. So this is the original brochure for the car and basically the story behind the car is they did this gb270 model as the as like a send-off it was the last year that they made the the hawkeye impreza so they did this special edition gb270 and when i did the last video i didn't know a great deal about it all i knew was that they only made 100 estates and 300 saloons so why was it called the 270 just for the horsepower yeah right yeah yeah so it wasn't because there was 270 of them no, yeah, it's just the horsepower, I think. There you go. They did only make 100, and these are all the little differences in the brochure. So you've got the the carpet mats, the Momo aluminium gear knob, which is actually original. I just assumed that somebody had put that on the car. The quick shift gear shifter, so it is very close together, the, the throw. That was the first thing I noticed when I got in the car. <laughs> yeah, you did. You, you were like... like you were like, short shift. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then the Pro Drive Performance Pack, which takes it to 270 PS and 420 newton meters of torque. I don't actually s still really know what comes what the Pro Drive Performance Pack includes, but that's what it's got. <laughs> that was all the stuff for the saloon. So the saloon came with the the bigger spoiler that you will have, you can see there the Pro Drive spoiler on the back of the saloon the grill on the front is silver i don't they haven't got a picture of that but yeah rear under spoiler uh for the for the wagon you've got like the gloss black pro drive wheels so these these wheels that are on the car now aren't the original wheels um we did suspect that because they stick in an absolute yeah. mile don't they so much <laughs> yeah yeah when you look at it it's like just do, do the wheels just <laughs> from the back. a mile in so need to get the original pro drive wheels for it which i thought was going to be a nightmare because if they've only made a hundred of them there's not going to be very many wheels available but the the wheels that they use are actually on quite a lot of other pro drive models so i'm going to see if i can get some of the gt1 pro drive wheels for it yeah we've got all the stuff like the black it says it's got black stainless mesh front grille but mine actually has a silver one on it and then you've got the rear mid mid spoiler so the mid wing on the back is is different from the original ones. For some reason, the wagon actually came f standard with the rear tinted windows, but you had to pay extra for it in the saloon. And then we've got all the optional he extras here, which is the interesting bit, because- This one has all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause I assumed that with it being a GB270, that it'd just come with embroidered GB270 seats, but apparently not. I'll stick a picture of what they actually come with, which basically look like Celica T-Spots. <laughs> They're just like, Beige. Standard tombstones, right? Really, yeah, tombstones with no embroidery. Um, so for extra, you've got like the Clarion sat nav, which it's it's got in it, and the iPod adapter. So we've got an iPod adapter in there, and the Bluetooth kit, which is down here. So he's gone for all the uh, extra entertainment stuff. One thing that I missed when I was first reading the brochure there. This is actually two different options for the seats. So there's there's a, a nice set, but then there's an even nicer one, which is the half leather and the half Alcantara, which is the one that this has got. So it's got the better of the two options. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> um, so yeah. you've saved sixteen hundred pounds there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's all the differences. Um, so there's a bit bit more insight in there for yeah what gb270 is compared to a normal wrx like we're, we said we're just going to give the car a bit of a quick health check going to jack it up check the ant rear anti-roll bar and yeah just see where all this knocking noise is coming from <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so we've got the wheel off the car now. So basically all we're doing is having a lever of all the moving parts to, to see what's making the knock while we can actually see what's happening. We thought it was going to be um, like, he'd put the upgraded anti-roll bar on with the old drop links, but he's actually put upgraded drop links on it, so. Um, Head scratcher. Yeah. <laughs> what about the exhaust hanger? No. <laughs> That could be it, that noise. Yeah, just that initial set off. Yeah, because it's, it's over to one side, so it's. That's it, it's just falling on the chassis line. the tow bar, isn't it? Yeah, because nice. that should be hanging straight down. Yeah, it's this cable, it's tied on this side for some reason. For some reason, it's been tied up with a like a metal tie. Maybe it just hung too low for their aesthetic. Yeah. Because it is quite close to the bumper there. Yeah, it's where it's melted. Where it's the melted it. <laughs> so. We've uh, we've had given it a good check over. We just cut that tie now, and actually, the it sits in the hangers a lot better than it did. For some reason, they pulled it all the way up to that side, so you can see where it's burnt away the bumper there. But now we've taken that tie out. It's sat say straight in the middle of where the recess is. I'm not really sure why they've done that. I don't well, know, but it's, we might it find out. Sits <laughs> a lot now. Yeah, it sits exactly where it should. So. Yeah, we might find out in a minute that it's that rattling like mad or something. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll get, we'll get chuck that wheel back on. We can't really find anything wrong on that side, no, so... No, no. It was definitely this side it was coming from. So we've uh, had a good check around the back. The anti-roll bar seems to be bomb on, doesn't it? Like it, it's yeah, nice no, and tight. Yeah, looks really good actually. Um, it's got, got new uprated drop links on the back and the front as well. So, and the brakes all seem, yeah. they're good. Uh, they're not working properly for some reason. Yeah. They're just old pads. Yeah, the, yeah, the discs are all clean. There's no There's rust on them. Safe. Yeah, safe. yeah. So um, maybe we just need to stick some fresh discs and pads yeah. on it at some point. And the brake fluid itself looked good as well, so a little bleed just to make sure all the... Yeah, the, the guy that owned it before was really particular about keeping on top of all the service stuff. I think it's had like all the gearbox and diff oils yeah. changed yeah. and everything, so... So yeah, we, the, there's nothing wrong with the anti-roll bar. We think it's going to be this exhaust because that was the closest thing to knocking on anything, yeah. so... Taking off the locking wheel nuts before we have another disaster like we had in the Volvo. Yeah. <laughs> so we got, got rid of the locking wheel nuts so that I don't have to worry about that. Um, I want to try and get the original pro drive wheels to go back on the car at some point so once i've got the pro drive wheels on we'll get some nicer looking wheel nuts on it as well but yeah let's go take it for a test drive and see if it drives a bit better than it, it did bang, 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 yeah, bang. yeah. <laughs> turkeys <laughs> anyway <laughs> yes definitely still clunking So we have just been for a test drive. It's definitely quieter than it was, but there's still a bit of a knock there. I think it was, it's probably a combination of like two problems. I think the exhaust was knocking, but the suspension is knocking as well. I don't know if you'll that be able to hear major, that. Yeah. yeah. Go again. That yeah, that that's spot. shock, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And um, when I looked online, everybody, like the first, you put suspension in and uh, in oh, Google yeah. and it's like Hawkeye, uh, strut tops <laughs> or like suspension shocks knocking. So I think it is quite a common problem for the suspension to knock on these. So You're going to least... have to get coil overs. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We figured it out. We, f we fixed one bang, but we've still got one. So. And actually the exhaust looks a lot better. Now. It does. It yeah. Where it sits where it's meant to. And it's not burning the bumper, which is good. <laughs> that was our little health check on the Subaru. Basically, we've figured out things are broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think the uh, the plan with the brakes, I think 
they look like they need a re well not a refresh they're, they're actually quite good condition but i think they've been on there for a long time and then the car's not been driven as much as it probably should have been so we maybe get some uprated pads and some uprated discs for it and see if that makes the pedal feel any better well the pedal feels all right but it's just like you're stamping on the brakes and it's, it's barely doing anything so we'll stick some new discs and pads on it it's had new calipers on the front on both sides they're aftermarket calipers i don't know whether that has something to do with it like maybe they're just not as good as they're meant to be <laughs> what brand are they wrx pro whatever that is <laughs> it's possibly just a a, a non-subaru yeah. OEM replicant yeah, and they're probably not allowed to print. The, they yeah. won't be allowed to print the Subaru on it, will they? As you can see, you can see here, like the discs. Discs are all fine and very hot. <laughs> <laughs> we like to do um, thorough road tests here. <laughs> yeah, at least we know what's wrong with it now. We kind of like have a bit of a better scope of what needs to be done. Yeah, in the next video will probably be us fitting a new shock absorber or some coilovers. <laughs> called BC Racing. <laughs> yeah, that is. A little health check on the on the GB270 and a little bit of information about it now that yeah. we actually know what it is. So yeah, check back in the next video. We'll probably be fixing some stuff. Um, yeah, peace out. <laughs>